My name is Roy Finch, and I'm a teacher here at Chapman University. I primarily worked as a sound designer and a music editor and a composer. I'm actually mastering an EDM record. I have an EDM band called Finnegan Finch. We're both electronic musicians. He's also a jazz artist, um, but we, it's synthesizers and computers, and you know, we, we make music together. We're both really exploring that and really trying to, to go into new territories and maybe fail a lot. It's kind of fun to be in this position. But not, we're not doing it for the money. I've also written some things. I've directed an indie feature film and some theater. So, you know, done a bunch of different jobs in the industry. There are those moments that you have, you know, in cinema. I think I was like eight years old and my dad took me to 2001. They re-released it. I just watched a, a 70 millimeter print of it on Sunday night at the Arrow Theater, packed house, and realized how much that film just like blew my mind. I didn't really understand it, it was kind of boring, but I kind of worship the filmmaking, if that makes any sense. My wife had worked with Francis Coppola for many years, um, so I was you know, involved in, in some of those productions early on when I still thought I wanted to be a, just a, a composer. When I was living in San Francisco, where Coppola is based, his son started a very small production company, and uh, so I was kind of brought on as a sound person and somebody who knows post and uh, that's, that's how I really got into filmmaking. Spirit of 76 was a film that I, I did music editing on and sound design. Um, there was a film called Secret Garden, which I always still love. Did sound design on that, uh, and sound editing. Um, Godfather 3, I did some music editing and some various other uh, things, working mostly assisting the director. I worked on Dracula for a very long time. That I always think of as my grad school because that was over a year and a half of very intensive work. VR is primarily an experience where you are in a virtual reality, so you are removed from the present reality. And you have a headset, so you can only see within the VR space what's being projected on through that headset, and not, you know, what's in the real world anymore. You have headphones, um, you may have um, some sort of gloves, or sometimes a vest that's giving you various physical feedback. Um, and you can go into a, a space. AR, on the other hand, is uh, augmented reality. But that's where you have, where you are engaging in the world just like, you know, we are sitting here, but you also have other elements that are projected into that world, generally as holograms, so that AR would actually um, make the need for a laptop or a television obsolete. If we were wearing these, these devices right now, we could be talking, having this discussion, and then, oh, this is great video on YouTube. We could both look at this wall, and that would, you know, the video would play on that wall. When I first experienced virtual reality, I was actually at the Directors Guild of America. It was going to be a, a roller coaster, uh, a VR roller coaster ride. You know, a lot of loud, people talking around, I just thought, I'm not gonna have a good experience with this. I put that on, and as the roller coaster ride started, my stomach went into my throat. You know, even though I knew that I was sitting in a chair, you know, at the DGA. Um, and that was sort of the moment where I just went, oh wow, this is a really powerful, potentially a powerful medium. But as far as teaching it, you know, one of the most exciting things for me is that, you know, there's not a lot of times in students' lives where a new medium is born. That's been part of what keeps me going. We have a number of very small cameras that have these two fisheye lenses and that allow you to take a 360 video. So you would basically put on the headset and experience this kind of narrative story in, in 360 degrees. We have access to like a hundred year old series of cabins in Maine on 12 acres of land on the shores of a very pristine remote lake. I came up with the idea of having a website that basically we're soliciting uh, ideas like pitches, short pitches for the horror film. It's uh, mainhorror.com and um, you know people are putting log lines and 500 word synopsis that they would send to us. And then of, of the group that we've gotten, I think we're about 30 or 40 right now, we'll then maybe pick about half a dozen and then take that to the next level kind of development phase.
see, he's wearing the glasses because he's drinking smart water. He's a smart man. <laughs> yeah, smart man.